Hello everyone. Like I stated in the last video, I'm going to do a video every week and show you books that I've pulled for my private collection. This is the second video. So um, I'm having a good time with this. I'm finding a lot of things that I'm real happy to keep. And so I am going to share this with you. And then I have a little comment to make about something that happened uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, right before I did the first video. And I thought I would talk about that. So let's jump right into the book, shall we? These are private collection books, things that I'm going to keep for me. First one up is a, cr is a crossed ash can right there. A different Archie, uh, Afterlife with Archie. This is number seven. Of course, the, another P-Boy cover right there. Betty and Veronica got the zombies in the background. A very popular cover when it came out. A really nice uh, Creature of the Black Lagoon Elvira book right here. Kind of goes hand in hand. One of my favorite Universal Monsters, Creature from the Black Lagoon. And, you know, when I was a teenager growing up uh, in the 80s, or, you know, late 70s, early 80s, Right here, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, movie macabre out of Los Angeles on a Saturday night. Loved it, loved it. There you go. Here's an Oz book again, like we've talked about. Zenoscope knows how to do their females right there. There's a good uh, cover right there. Dorothy. Let's grab some more out of the box. Here is an Undiscovered Country. Uh, two signatures, Charlie Soule and Scott Snyder. I thought that was a pretty nice little book. It's supposed to be Betsy Ross, I'm assuming, with a flag. Evil Ernie. Right here, of course, homage to Amazing Spider-Man 300. I just, you know, Evil Ernie, popular character, just kind of a cool cover right there that I wanted to keep. Falls into the, checks a lot of the boxes of the things that I like. A story that I liked, we talked about this on the channel when it came out. This was a Scout Comics. This is Ranger Stranger. I just always liked the, the little beaver right there, all scared. Just a cool storyline if you didn't read it. Uh, I liked it, so I'm going to keep the issue number one. Maniac of New York, Bronx is Burning. Right there, of course, a Jason ripoff, but it was a very good storyline, and the covers are pretty nice. Smaller Company, Asylum Press, Zombie Tears, issue number one. Little girl holding the hand of a zombie, got the entrails coming out. Nice little cover there. Silent Night, Deadly Night, Santa doing some of his uh, business right there. Not a, not a ho, 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 happy uh, present in that bag, I'll tell you that right now. Book I really like, of course, Tarot, Witch of the Black Rose, Really nice covers, decent storyline, but these are mostly cover purchases right there. There's a cool cover there. Okay, some covers I cannot show. Uh, Something's Killing the Children right there. I'm going to keep all the Something's Killing the Children for the most part, uh, at least two or three copies of each issue because I have complete runs. It's great storyline. We've talked about Something's Killing the Children on this channel many, many times. Um, Erica Slaughter, great character. Let's see what we got. Let's see what else we got here. Fright Night, old Peter Vincent on the cover there. This cross, cool cover. Of course, from this is American Mythology Productions. Bone Parish from Bone Stu from Boom Studios. Really enjoyed this. If you don't know the premise of this story, the new drug of choice down in New Orleans is crushed up human bones that they use. And you apparently when you take the drug, intake the drug, you relive that person's life in visions and memories. And I thought that was a really cool cover. This is an issue number one. If you haven't had a chance to read Bone Parish, go ahead and grab the, uh, the trade. It'll be a good read. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, swimsuit issue, of course. This is um, Adam Hughes. Right there. Of course, the signature right there, the old AH. If you know anything about music and punk, this was a Cramps cover. They just redid it, did a homage cover of it right here. But I had the original album, of the Cramps, this cover right here. And it is a classic cover. A lot of t-shirts, a lot of stuff on there. Just another Maniac in New York with the female. The 
The Deviant, really good storyline. Nice covers. There's a few covers of that. You got Santa right there. Up to no good. Kind of like a Silent Night, Deadly Night, Silent Night, Deadly Night type uh, storyline. Let's see what else we have here. Again, some of these books I cannot show. Another Adam Hughes, Alice Ever After. Really nice cover right there. Some of these books I do have multiple cover copies of because they're always going to sell. This is Betty Page. Just a nice Betty Page cover. I am a huge Betty Page fan. And certain covers on the Betty Page are nice. That happens to be one of them. Uh, a storyline that I was reading, it was pretty good. Um, I just kind of drifted away from it. Uh, this is Holy Roller. This is a variant cover. I just liked it because, you know, he's beating up the guy in the southern, you know, the rebel flag right there. I just thought it was a pretty funny cover, so I had grabbed that when it came out. Let's see what else we got here. This is another cover of Deviant right here. This is a snow globe version where the front page opens, the snow globe is a cutout. So it was kind of kind of neat, so I grabbed that when it came out. Uh, from Asylum Press, this is Vampires. This was number one. Kind of reminded me of an old EC cover or a pre-code hor horror cover, however you want to say it. I don't say it right. People laugh at me. That's okay. Horror and horror, horror are the same thing to me. So there's that. Here is a art germ cover for Batman and Robin. Certain things I can't show. This is something epic, follow the dream. Of course, this was a corn album cover right here, the little girl skipping off the uh, the side of the cliff. They just kind of did a homage to that right there. Zombie Tramp, licking a skeleton. Eat the Rich, good cover right there with the bloody ladies. This is a Harley Quinn number five. I just like this cover right here. I thought it was a cool cover. Pop Star Assassin from Behemoth Comics. This is right here. You got kind of like an Elvis and a girl sitting there. I think that's an Anarchy A right there. It is just like the tattoo on my arm. No nudity on that one. Pop Star Assassin. Red Room. Uh, if you've read Red Room, there are some, you know, uh, stories that are really good and then some that are just kind of, kind of like a cross, really out there. Um, so we got that. There's another Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And again, these are things that are just boxes I'm going through and pulling out books that are going to keep for my private collection. Here's another one, The Madness, kind of a Jason mask right there. Uh, kind of an easy sell if you do Jason mask correctly. People will buy it. Kill Your Darlings, issue number one. Cool cover right there. If you haven't read the, read the first couple issues of this, it was really good. A uh, little girl has like a, a teddy bear world. And they were at war. And as you can tell in that picture, it didn't end too well for some of her teddy bears. Al Capone Vampire. Kind of a Marilyn Monroe ho uh, homage right there. But, you know, you got, you got old Al and Marilyn. That's a must. Here's Lovecraft, right here, kind of a, you know, girl reading and a creeper in the background, kind of a cool cover. The Vampire Slayer, I just like this with the, you know, she's got the stake, she's got the pentagram on the back of the jacket, just kind of a cool cover. Serial number one, Little Girl Killer, you gotta love it. I absolutely love that storyline, and I do have a lot of the serials. That was a really cool cover when I saw it. Uh, just kind of stand in the rain drinking a slushy and a bunch of blood all over. Florida Man. Controversial when it came out for obvious reasons, you can probably see. But a very popular cover as well. This is Stuff of Madness. This is a glow in the dark cover. I don't know if you can kind of see the Stuff of Madness right there on the top. If there's a lot of glare, I apologize. It's says mylar, lights, usually a bad combination. 
This is Cradle of Filth. Of course, the cover, an Elizabeth Bathory cover. Um, I am a big Elizabeth Bathory fan, so I definitely was going to have that. Elvira with a Nightmare on Elm Street. Homage. Again, none of these books are real expensive, but they're just things that I like. And at the bottom line right now, at this day and age, that's all that's important to me. Things that I can just look through. I can pick up a box, look through some books, see some nice covers, and get enjoyment out of it. There's another Nightmare on Elm Street homage right there. The Zombie Tramp. We talked about this when the book had first come out with the lollipop. I can't show anything like that. This is another Stuff of Nightmares right here. Uh, trying to close the hatch on the... A zombie coming up or the monster a la Evil Dead, kind of. Really nice Lady Death cover right there. And I'm going to show a few vintage books that I've, you know, been putting in Mylar uh, back and forth. Here's another uh, Lady Death right here. Here is a Wonderland Asylum. This is a Zenoscope exclusive. Really cool cover right there. There you go. I don't know if I showed this one. There's an Elvira right there. I don't know if I showed this one already. But again, I have multiple copies of a lot of these books, which I'm going to keep. Here's another Tarot. A really nice Vampirella, the old blood red uh, version. Lady Death. This is what is this? It was called a. Um, oh, this was a was it a noir a noir cover or a Art Deco? They called it an Art Deco. They came out with different colors. They were all really nice. There's another tarot. It's a Zombie Tramp Christmas uh, book. Cross, one of my favorites for covers. Uh, doing some grocery shopping right there. It's another cross. Someone's uh, having a bad day, getting the side of this head blown apart. So Wonderland right there, pulling the rabbit out of the hole. Here is a Maniac of New York, kind of a Forrest Gump uh, homage thing. There's uh, only 350 of these. I just thought it was really cool. There's another Zombie Tramp signed by Dan Mendoza. And how about one more little stack of modern, and then we will go to some vintage. The vintage, anything, well, I'll talk about vintage when I get there. This is the last little stack here. Here's another uh, Zombie Tramp. This is the New York City Comic Con exclusive. Right there. Here's another one of the Art Deco books, the orange. This is the green version they had. Really, really cool. That is signed right there by Brian Polito. Dollface number one, signed by Dan Mendoza. A Stray Dogs, Friday the 13th homage right there. I love the Stray Dogs storyline. I thought it was really good. I'm reading Feral right now. So far, Feral's pretty good. Uh, but I really did like the the uh, Stray Dogs. Canto 2, The Hollow Men, number one. Love me some Canto here. And finally, the last one, Zombie Side, day one. I just kind of liked it. The girl jumping out of the window, got the chainsaw, the zombies trying to grab her. So that's a definite collector for me. So again, these are just books that I like, covers that I like. These are all covered. My personal books are going to be my cover books. Uh, and of course, some storylines that I like. Something's Killing the Children, which we talked about. She Bites, which we talked about. Uh, you know, Stray Dogs, I liked. Uh, if I have a storyline that I like, I'm going to keep those storylines. Uh, so there was that. Well, and I'll show you some of the vintage books I've uh, put aside. Now, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not putting these aside for me. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing all the books that are kind of 30 cents and earlier, which is basically, well, basically 1980 and earlier. 
uh, is what I'm going to do. And I'm putting it all in Mylar. And if I ever go to a show or something like that, I'm just going to be able to put that stuff, you know, on a table. It's already Mylar. Price it and let it go. So I'll show you some of these right now. Weird War. Uh, one of my all-time favorite covers. I think I talked about this cover on past videos. Uh, kind of like War. You got the soldier right here looking. You got the Germans that are, you know, scared. And you got Death trying to tell the person, come on. I just really like that cover. So that is a no-brainer. Uh, Man Thing number four. Again, this is like, you know, 20 cent cover, so 70s, anything 80 and earlier. There might be a few from the early, early 80s, but it's mostly going to be, you know, 30 cent, 35 cents and earlier. Here's a man thing number three. These are just things I'm finding in boxes. Captain Marvel 45. Avengers 89. Of course, I go through everything. Everything's complete. If there's a Marvel value stamp, I'll put a little notation on the back of what the stamp is. Uh, Luke Cage, Power Man number, was that 35? 35. I like these books, because these, especially the 25 cent, 30 cent, 35 cent books. I remember a lot of them, you know, going to the 7-Eleven. I remember seeing those in 7-Eleven spinner racks. Uh, Legion of Superheroes number two. Superman number 244. This is a 48 page giant. I hope I am not boring you too much, but these are kind of how the videos are going to go for a little bit. So I do hope you enjoy, you know, the books that I'm showing. Action Comics 438. Justice League of America 108. Submariner 33. Lois Lane, number, well, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, 124, bondage cover. Welcome back, Cotter, 1976, super high grade version of this. Remember watching this show with sweat hogs and all that. Action Comics 407. Superman 238. Son of Satan number four. This is also first appearance of the prophet. Four two seventy nine bondage cover right there. That might go in the private. One more little stack here, and then we'll go on to the next thing. Son of Satan, number two. Chamber of Chills, number two. It's Gil Kane cover. What is that on the back of that? No, nope, nothing. Right there, Chamber of Chills. Chamber of Chills, number three. Spectacular Spider-Man, number 99, second appearance of Spot. Again, just books I'm finding in boxes as I'm going through stuff. Swamp Thing, number 12. Definitely want that. Good color on that red right there. Werewolf by Night, number 20. This also has, like I said right there, there's the Marvel Value stamp, number 97, the Black Knight. I'll put it on there so people know that, you know, or I know that there is a Marvel Value stamp. It's been checked and it is actually in the book. Uh, Wonder Woman. This is, it's a Whitman variant, so there's no number on this one here. But there's, you know, a Wonder Woman there. You can see the Whitman symbol up top. Kind of in chains. One of my favorite covers of all time. It's an iconic cover, so it's a lot of people's favorites. Excuse me, I drank some milk and now I'm burping it up. Uh, Batman 404. Two more books. Son of Satan number eight. And Crypt of Shadows. Number three, this is a Ramita cover. Ramita Sr., of course. And I always like this one too, the, you know, the skeleton playing. He's playing you know, cards with somebody who they, with people you shouldn't be playing. They say he's got the dead man's hand. 
there it is right there. So those are what I have right now. Of course, I'm going to do this every week, or if I have time, maybe twice a week, because I am going through more and more. Um, if you happen to like what I'm showing, give it a thumbs up, okay? Let me know in the comments. Hey, you know what? I'm enjoying these. I'm enjoying you showing these books right here. It's, you know, nice to see what you're collecting. It's nice to see some of the older vintage you're finding. So that's kind of it right there. And again, Mylar makes everything look really, really good. So there's that. Um, one last thing. I said in the last video uh, about if people want to come and take a look at some books that they might want to buy in some boxes that I probably haven't gone through yet, you're more than welcome to do that. You can get a hold of me uh, and, you know, make an arrangement to come and take a look at some books, uh, you know, and do that. Uh, I had someone do that this past week and, you know, he picked up some nice books and seemed very happy with the purchase and I appreciated him coming over. We had a nice conversation about a lot of different things. So there was that. Uh, again, if you're interested in picking up some books, give me a, send me a message or if those of you who know me and you have my phone number, uh, you can just send me a text message. That's what he did. He's, he's a local. He's seen me, he had my number and he just sent me a text message on that there. So uh, I got a call right before I did the last video. And I was going to talk about it, the first video, but I didn't have a chance to do that. I had the opportunity um, well, I didn't have the opportunity. Someone contacted me and said, hey, um, you had mentioned at a shop to somebody that you were interested in, you know, maybe selling some books. I'm interested in buying some books. I've dealt with you at some sh at some local shows in the past, and I would love to come and take a look at some stuff. So I made arrangements, and I said, okay, we can do that. And I brought him to one of my storage facilities that has a ton of books. Uh, I think it's like 34, 35 short drawer boxes like the ones you see behind me filled with books all kinds of stuff that's just been sitting in storage uh mostly stuff from the last 20 years you know 20 years in like 2004 and up maybe some older a little bit of older stuff maybe you know some late 80s stuff uh but nothing big a lot of modern stuff 99 percent super super high grade i'm talking you know these were put in you know boards boxed put away that's it uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, nine four, nine six, nine eight, uh, all day long, all bagged and boarded. And so uh, he came and he looked at everything and he counted stuff and he was like, "Well, how many bags? You know, how many uh, books do we think we have here?" And I said, he figured out like between seven half between seventy five hundred and eight thousand books is what was in this particular storage area, boxed, bagged and boarded, you know, that type of stuff. And he was like, "Oh man, I really, really want." this uh collection i really want this group of books i want them all so i said okay what are you offering because now i want to see what his thought process is is he a serious buyer or is he just trying to get something for nothing and he was like you know what i'll give you 480 dollars so if you do the math on 480 dollars so you have eight thousand which i thought was funny and you divide that by $420. Actually, no, that wasn't right. Yeah, he was offering, he was offering basically four and a half cents a book is what he was offering. He was offering four and a half cents a book. And I was like, you know what? I'm not interested in selling things for four and a half cents. That's not an offer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not interested. Thank you for your time. You know, thank you for wasting my time. And that was the end of it. And he was like, you know, that's a really fair offer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, it's not a fair offer. Uh, that's, you know, I can go in the backyard, burn my books and get more enjoyment out of it than selling them to you for four and a half cents a piece. So, because this, like I said, these are all bagged and boarded. They're high grade, you know, a lot of Batman, things like that. Just a lot of good stuff that you could really flip easily at shows. Uh, or comic shop, you put them out on your tables and you're going to, you're going to blow them out. Uh, so I was like, no. And so I didn't think much about it. Very next day, I get a call from a guy and he's like, Hey, uh, you know, my friend went out and he looked at your, looked at some books yesterday and we made you an offer and you didn't want it. Uh, why? So I'm like, because I didn't want the offer. And then he comes and he, this is what made me laugh. He says, you know, let me explain to you the market of buying and selling books, since obviously you don't know what, what it is. So I told him, you know what? Thank you so much for your time. And I just hung up on him. I don't mind selling books. I'm not giving books away. I'm offering people to come and buy books. I'm, 
if they want to buy some stuff, I'll give good prices on them, if that's what you want, but give fair prices. I am not in the position, I am not sitting here in desperation mode, I got to sell books, I got to pay this, I got to pay that. That's all what I'm doing. I'm trimming down a collection. I'm trimming down the amount of books that I have. You want to buy some books and be the first one in and take a look at it, or you want to give me a fair offer on a, a group of books, we'll talk. I have no problem with that. If you think you're going to get these things for nothing, then, you know, I am not the one here. So I want to make that perfectly clear. I'd be more than happy to sell books to people. I'll be more than happy to allow you to go into the storage area because you're not going to be able to get into it at night anyways because it's locked up and it's got locks and everything else. So I'm not worried about that. Um, but what I am is I'm giving people an opportunity. If you're a serious buyer and you want to come and take a look at some stuff and buy some stuff, fantastic. You get first-hand pick stuff, you know, whatever you want. There is no vintage in there. The vintage I am going to bag and board and put in boxes away. But what you have is a lot of modern books that are bagged and boarded that are all super, super high grade. Like I'm saying, 949698. If you are a person who wants to sell at shows, if you're a person who has a shop and you want to put stuff on your table and just expand your inventory with good product, let me know and we can talk about that. So that was pretty much it. Again, I appreciate all the viewers, I appreciate all the comments that I got uh, after my last video, and I'm going to be consistent and show you books every week. Again, if you enjoy these videos, just put a little comment in the, in the comments and let me know that you're enjoying the content. Uh, again, I'm just trying to stay, you know, connected, finger on the pulse, do something that I think people are going to like, and, you know, still talk about the, the market, the current market. As you know, the current market is really bad. Shops are losing a lot of money, uh, and people are dumping collections at a high rate, uh, you know, they're just not, you know, you're buying. So the big money people are buying collections and the people that are trying to, you know, who, who thought that they could make easy money just by putting some comic books on a table at a show or opening up a shop with comic books are realizing that it doesn't work that way. We've talked about this uh, on this channel before. Have a business plan to make money to sustain the long haul. And a lot of people didn't do that. Now they're paying the price for it right now. So that's it. So there's nothing else to say. Again, I appreciate all the comments, positive comments. I appreciate the people who watch this. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you know somebody who might like to subscribe to the channel or might enjoy the content of the channel, hit that subscribe button. But if there's nothing else, I hope you liked the video. But as always, if you didn't, nothing I can do for you. Have a great, great day, and I'll see you real soon with another video.